Hi everyone. So um, it has come to my attention that a lot of fake pages have been created for me on different social media platforms. Um, asking people to give money, requesting um, some kind of support to some orphanage somewhere and they ask you to call. Um, I just wanted to do this disclaimer because I don't want you to be scammed by these people. Um, I do not ask for money in your DM or send you a message asking for money or asking you to give any kind of money to any orphanage or anything. I would not do that. Secondly, I have only one page on every social media platform. So on Instagram, I have one page at Pastor Mildred. On YouTube, um, it's Mildred Kingsley Konko and on Facebook is Mildred Kingsley Konko. Um, I do not have any other backup page or fan page or any of that sort of page. Um, so please be careful when you're dealing with people on social media. Be very careful. Um, my other handles do not have pastor, do not have, my surname is King Sokongwa, not Okonkwa. So just be careful out there. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for being a part of my tribe and the community on every platform. Because of you, I get to do what I do every day and I love doing it. Thank you everyone for being such a huge support um, to everything that I do. God bless you. Please let me lay a foundation first of all. I come in peace. So anything that I say this night that offends you, just take it. The one that is your own, take it. The one that is for your neighbor, put it in your pocket. When you get home, give it to your neighbor nicely and as peacefully as I gave it to you. Praise God. Okay, so let me start. Um, I just want to, tonight I'm just going to share a few of my own personal experiences um, laced with the word. And what I'm trying to do tonight is to get you to go back to the word of God. Um, a lot of times when we do marriage seminars, relationship meetings, people just want to come and laugh and have fun and hear motivational teaching and then go home to the usual same old, same old thing. Let me tell you the truth. The only thing that will make your marriage work is revelation. If you have a revelation of the word, it will make your marriage work. So a lot of times people want the five steps to 10 steps to 12 steps. I'm giving you the one step. The one step is the word. If you can go back to the word, everything that you're looking for is in the word. I'm going to start by building on what Pastor K um, said this afternoon. He said something about being, you know, if you're going to have a good marriage, you have to be. And this is so important because... If you look through the Bible, in fact, let's start with Jesus. So Jesus was on earth, and he was doing great things. He was doing miracles. He was, you know, raising the dead, doing a lot of things. And then one of the Pharisees came to him by night, maybe because he was afraid that if I come in the afternoon, what people will judge me. Or the other Pharisees will, because they had questions. Should we follow this guy? Should we not? So he was afraid, but he came to Jesus by night. And he said something very interesting. He said, Rabbi, no man can do the things you do except God be with him. And Jesus laughed. I said, that's how you people are. Always missing the point. Jesus said, it's not about doing. He's except a man be born again. He has to first be before he can do. So you always have it backwards. So we always want the steps, but we are not. You have to first be the right person, before you can marry the right person. You have to first be the right person before you can recognize the right person. So a lot of times people ask me questions. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of pretenders in church, a lot of fake brothers in church. How will you know the one that is fake and the one that is real? If you are real, you will recognize real. It's like when you travel, I mean, maybe to white people, to white people, if you see black people, we all look alike. Abby? You, you may not know that, but to, you can, I can travel with my sister's passport, so you may not know the difference. But if you are a black man, you will know who is Kenyan, who is Nigerian, who is Cameroonian. Once you see a Niger person, deep will call to deep. <laughs> we were in Paris some years ago, and you know, at the airport, they have these trains that move every two, two minutes. You know, to take you to the terminals. Two minutes without fail. You know how we both do things now. Every two minutes without fail, a new train will come. So we're just, we just don't want moving. So we just stood waiting for the next one. 
one guy flew down the escalator, ran and flew and jumped. He now used one hand, blocked the door, entered, jumped inside. He almost died. Where do you think that, which country do you think is from? <laughs> Without asking question, we all knew that in his mind, he was in Lagos, jumping Molwe bus. So you don't even need, so it's the same way, it's the same principle. You see, natural things are sometimes a representation of spiritual things. So if you, it's the same way you will recognize a Nigerian, because you are Nigerian, it's the same way you will recognize a true believer because you are a true believer. If your own believing is shaking, you too, you will not recognize. If you are a pretender too, you too, you will not recognize a real person. So Jesus said, you first have to be. And so the very first secret to having a good marriage is being a Christian. I know that sounds simple on the surface, but I'm telling you, if you can be a Christian, not the one that just comes to the and says, I give my life to Jesus, and then you, as you are going, you collect it back and go and sit down. Not that type. I'm talking about really being a Christian, that your nature is reborn. Your nature is now like the nature of God. And so the things that appeal to you are the things that appeal to God. You hate iniquity. You love righteousness. There's just something that stirs up. When you hear the word, there's something inside you that will be sweet. You'll be salivating over Bible. That somebody's reading Bible to you, I say, which version is that? Is it TPT or a message? It's sweeting you. Do you understand? And you are living, there's something inside you that is just stirred up every time you hear worship. Because they are worshiping your king, your God. There's just something that comes alive in you. That's the kind of Christianity I'm talking about too. The kind of Christianity that you are not afraid to speak the truth irrespective of who does not agree with you. And it is so important because of the generation we live in, social media generation. Most people are getting their marriage counseling advice from motivational speakers online. And half the time, their own marriages are horrible. They are sending Pastor K DM to help their marriage. And they are coming out to tell you rubbish. Who started marriage? God. If God started marriage, he had a plan for marriage. And he has an instruction manual for marriage. Pastor K read yesterday. I don't want to go back there. He had a plan. He has a prototype of how the church, how the body and the head. You know yesterday when he was preaching, he said something. He was talking and he was saying that, you know, if you meet a guy and the guy says he loves Jesus, but he does not believe in the church. He does not love the church. And I just couldn't shake in my head. I was just sitting down there and I was just thinking about how people complain about the body of Christ. And they say they love Jesus, but they complain about the body of Christ. In a human being's body, which part of the body do, needs work most times? It's not your body. Your head is usually fine. If you want to lose weight, is it in the head you lose weight? Now your belly go to disgrace you. Your head will be all right. It's the same way. It's your leg that will be K. Your head is never K leg. So it's the same way. The head is all right. Jesus is very all right. It is the rest of us that are the problem. We are the ones that need to lose weight. We need lipo. We need tummy talk. We need all kinds of things to make the body look good. So you know, sometimes when people complain about the church, I'm just laughing. You cannot love Jesus and not love the church. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So a lot of times, people just go to social media. You need to remember who you are and whose you are. Where do you get your information from? We have to go back to the word. I'm not, I mean, I may not preach you happy tonight, but I need to tell you the truth. You need to go back to the word. The word is your sustenance. The word is where your instruction comes from. The word is what guides you. The word, God has given us everything we need to make marriage work in the word. Everything. It will amaze you. I want to share my own experience with the word. The word of God has always been what has saved me in everything. Maybe that's why I'm so passionate about the word of God. Today is gist. I'll give you gist. Plenty gist. Who wants to hear gist? See them. Open to revelation. I'm going to read Bible. So, a couple of years ago, I was dating. In fact, I was even living in Portaco at that time. I was dating a doctor. So, um, no, before that, we started dating my final year in Ife. Then 
I, I came to Port Harcourt. We continued long distance relationship. I was a doctor. Before that, at 16, at the age of 16, they had told me I would never be able to have children. I was diagnosed with PCOS, unexplained uterine bleed, plenty of things. Yeah. Literally, I was the woman with the issue of blood, so I was always bleeding. I need to take medicine not to bleed. So it was just a lot, a lot of a lot. So I literally had planned my life. So if they tell you you will not have children, you are bleeding all the time. If you see a doctor that wants to marry you and is now doing his master's in the abroad, are you not settled for life? Hannah. And wisdom is profitable to direct. So I planned my life. I said, we'll go marry a doctor, we'll go to London. If we want to do IVF, we'll go do I'm there. So halfway down the line, guy was doing his master's. I was doing my master's in Lagos. Um, one morning I was just praying. And then I was, after praying, I just studying the word. And then I was reading about um, where Jesus was at the well with the woman at the well. And then he was talking to her and he said, she said, um, he said, if you know the person that's asking you for water, you ask him to give you water and give you water, blah, blah, blah. And they were just going back and forth like that, just at the well. And then the woman now said, ah, I don't even like suffer. So Kuku, give me the water now, so I won't need to come back here and fetch water again. And then Jesus said to her, go and call your husband. And she said, I don't have any husband. And Jesus said, you rightfully said it because the man you are with, you've had five husbands, but the man you are with is not your husband. And that part of the scripture just jumped at me. Now, let me say this, disclaimer. This is not the way to find husband. Because now, after I've said this, now everybody will go and be looking for, what's jumping at me? What's jump <laughs> I'm just sharing my experiences with the word. And this is how the word has been on every issue of my life on staying in Ife or going to Unilag on, you know, should I do this course, should I not? God always speaks to me to the word. So you must know how God speaks to you. You must know your journey. So please, don't, don't make this a principle. But I'm just sharing this. Because I want you to fall back in love with the word. And so when I saw that thing, the man I'm with is not my own. I said, Holy Spirit, this is rough play. Oh. The man that I'm with is not my own. What am I going to tell my parents? By this time, I forgot to mention we had done introduction. Five years introduction. And then God says, the man that you are with is not your own. He took all the strength in me. Now, did I obey immediately? No. I was going to say yes, but no, I didn't. I told God. The guy was born again. He was everything. Great guy, romantic. You know those pull-out chairs kind of guy? Send you um, mixed tapes. Now you know my age. <laughs> You know, all those kind of extra romantic things. And God says, end it. The guy didn't do anything to me, offend me. He has never cheated on me, not seen. Bible believing somebody. And so I told God, the only way we're going to do this, Lord, is that you have to end it. He has to break up with me. And so long and short, I don't want to go into the long story. Long and short, there was some back and forth. During that period, I met Pastor K, but as a friend. Nothing, I couldn't have even liked him. <laughs> and I will tell you why. And this may help some people. You know how we have idols. Ladies, there are idols in your head keeping you from meeting the man that you're supposed to marry. You have some certain things in your head. There's a way the man should be tall, dark, handsome. So, short, yellow, ugly. Who is going to marry him? So anyhow, I had all these things in my head. And number one, I told God, I will do anything for you, but no matter I will not marry a pastor. I'm not marrying pastor. I'm not marrying lay minister. I'm not marrying deacon. I'm not marrying anybody that even carries pastor's Bible. <laughs> because that's how it starts. You start by carrying Bible, pastor's Bible. Then one day pastor is not around. Then they will not tell you to just help pastor and stay here. We are coming. <laughs> <laughs> pastor Larry, that was for you. I say I don't want anything like that. I told God, number one, I won't do that one. Number two, I don't want Igbo man. I don't do village. Oh my God. I am such a city girl. I don't do village. I don't. I don't like mosquitoes. I don't go to village meetings. I don't like to greet everybody. I don't want to go and visit aunties and uncles. And I definitely don't want to go to the stream. I don't like to sit outside and dance and sing or in a circle. No. I apologize. That's just not me. So I said I'm not my Igbo man. And secondly, I, feel, I felt that Igbo men were just arrogant. 
they're having a conversation in the room and they just suddenly think that all of us want to be a part of that conversation. <laughs> I'm like, sir, do you know that if you step outside, you would be able to have this conversation better? And <laughs> I just said, no, you know, Lord, I can't do that. Very proud people, I can't. Third thing, I said, Lord, I will not marry a hairy man. I didn't want to have a gorilla as a son. My son is five. He has serious sideburns that are coming all the way down. Sometimes he goes to his dad and says, Dad, see my beard? I'm like, my dear, you're five years old. So if, you, if, you, if I want to buff my son now, I have to open his back to scrub it. No. I say, God, I'm not going to do that with you. That's the third thing I will not take. And then the fourth thing. Yes, I was of the school of tall, dark, and handsome. I don't like yellow men. I don't want yellow boy. Yellow. And then God now decided that, you know what? Because I am God and you are not, I'm going to bundle all these things, wrap them together, and that's exactly what I'm going to give you. <laughs> and so when I met Pastor K, of course I was not attracted to him because he was all the things I did not want. And on top of it, he wasn't earning a salary. He was a, we we'll live by faith and not by sight. <laughs> I said, no, Lord, no, no. Doctor, UK, yes, yes. I'm not doing this with you, Lord. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, I don't particularly use my faith for things, Lord. I use it to get people saved and believe for the intercede. No, Lord. <laughs> no. But when it was now time, I told God, you know what? The same way you told me who it's not is the same way you're going to tell me who it is. So I was studying the word. Not that I was looking for husband though, inside the Bible. I was just studying the word. And then I was reading about how Samuel went to anoint um, one of Jesse's sons. And then he got there and they brought out different men. And he said, don't you have another one? And then Jesse answers and says, oh, there's yet one. He's the youngest and he's taking care of the sheep. And then when they brought him in, the Lord said to him, arise, anoint him for he's the one. And that same thing that happened, that scripture jumped at me again. I said, I don't understand. And then the Lord asked me, he said, what position is Kingsley? I say, he's the last one. He said, what do pastors do? I say, they take care of the sheep. He said, arise, anoint him for he's the one. <laughs> I say, Lord, why do you like to play like this? <laughs> anoint who? Somebody that I was telling, remember the, the, where I'm coming from? They opened doors for me, you know, mixtapes, love letters. I told this man one day, we're going out. I said, you can't even open door for somebody. I say, you aren't they paying you. So do you see where the Lord was taking me from and why I didn't think it was the Lord? And the more I was binding, the more God was saying, this is he. And so we started, we got married. When we got married, in fact, it's a long story because when we, got, when we were about to get married, I said to him, I said, this one, you are talking love. Oh. Doctor said I won't be able to have children. He said, who is doctors? I said, those people that wear white and stethoscope, like, because I don't understand this question. And he said, None shall be barren in the land. That's what the Bible says. So if it, that's the reason why you don't want to marry me, go and rest. We're going to have our children. He said, in fact, I've named them. So we continued. So when I got married, I asked God one question. I said, God, I don't like to struggle. I'm not one of those people that like to figure things out. There's no point. It's already there. So I asked God, I said, God, give me this secret to a great marriage. And God said, Ephesians 5.33. And that's where I'm going to start sharing from. Ephesians 5.33, the Amplified Version. Now, I'm going to read the Amplified Classic, then I'll read the Amplified. Because when I asked God for the secret, God gave me the Amplified Classic. But along the line, over the years, when I started studying that scripture, then God opened my eyes to the Amplified. So the Amplified Classic talks to the women, the Amplified talks to the men. It says, however, 5.33, Amplified Classic. However, let each man of you, without exception, Love his wife as being, in a sense, his very own self. And let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband. Now, see the work involved in submission and respect. It says that she notices him, that she regards him, that she honors him, she prefers him, she venerates him. If you have Catholic background, you will know what the meaning of that word veneration is. Veneration of the cross. That's worship. Literal worship. 
and esteems him and that she defers to him, praises him and loves and admires him exceedingly. <laughs> I say, God. Ah, you should have just told me that I should just stay in my father's house. This is what you pledge to do when you say, I do. Because a lot of times, people come to the altar. In fact, what even annoys me these days is that they have the most romantic vows. I will worship the ground you walk on. When your feet rises, my heart beat. Then six months down the line, pastor, I just can't. I can't take it anymore. I can't handle this. You know, pastor, I'm done. And my question is always, how are you done? Something will never enter fire, they're done. We have not even started, how, how do they say that thing? We never wash beans, my mind they smell. We have not even started. How in God's name are you done? No stamina. No. So when you are about to enter into marriage, you must first understand what you are pledging to do. That's why I'm reading it to you this night. So it's not just, you know, and, and I get, I, the, the video Pastor Larry was talking about, I got a lot of backlash on it. How dare you? In fact, someone sent me one, this thing, God will punish you for the homes you are ruining. You are teaching men out of his... I'm not teaching men anything that the Bible did not say. The real problem is that unbelievers are talking about things that were addressed to Christians. If you marry another believer, I'm going to show you the man's part. Me, this is what God said I should do. I should honor him. I should prefer him. I should venerate him. I should literally worship him. He's my king. I should treat him. I should notice him. God is saying I should do all these things. Those are the explanations for submission. I should do all these things. But only because God knows that I would have chosen someone who knows he should love me. So you will now go and marry rubbish. Then come and be sending me hate message and hate DM that I'm preaching rubbish. Because you married rubbish. This scripture was not for you. God expected that you would pick right. You would pick a man that is submitted to Christ. There's an order. There's an order to these things. So the woman is submitted to the husband. The husband is submitted to Christ. And Christ is submitted to God. Now you want to take the man out of the equation. You don't want a man submitted to Christ. Then you want to submit to him. You go die. So you are fighting a fight that was not addressed. What's your, what's your own? What's your own? Did he consign you? No. And so I see a lot of people fighting, unnecessary fight. What are you fighting about? Something that does not concern you. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. you. Narrate your king. You say no. Then go now. Why are you angry? Why are you so upset? Take bully and fish and some cold malt and be okay. <laughs> but you would think that until you see what the men are supposed to do. The man is expected to love you like Christ. How did Christ love you? He died. Our own is to worship who we die. God never said I should die for him. <laughs> now you the verse. What you the verse for? That if I cook, I should serve him two meat. And God says if there's not, he should give me the complete food. Who should be angry is the men. I never hear men complain about it. Never. Never. It's always the women. They're fighting. Why would you say men? You're cheating men. The one I preach to the men, you won't push it though. Because God forbid, make another woman blow. Why I go share her message? She go come the trend. God forbid. But the men are pushing it. And they're sending it to their wives. The one I preach for men, that they should treat their wives well. You won't send that one out. You come and be attacking me. But I've preached to men, I've preached to women. Let's see what I do, cut my blood, I'll be Jesus. <laughs> Ephesians 5.33, the Amplified. It says, however, each man among you, without exception is to love his wife as his very own self. Let me tell you why God said you should love as very own self. Because men are naturally selfish. A natural man will not do anything that won't favor him. Oh, look at when God wanted to deal with man. He said, if you don't love your wives or deal with your wives with understanding, he said, your prayers will be hindered. Because God knows I have to do something that will affect the man. Man, no, they think woman, oh no. It's a woman that will think about, oh, my children... For example, if, there's, if you come home now and there's one plate of food in the house, if a man gets home first, what will he do? He will eat it. If 
a woman gets home first, what will she do? She will keep it. Or she will start thinking about what other people will eat. So she will keep that one first, then start making something else. A man will just move on with his life. He doesn't even remember that there are people in this world. I'm, I, I mean, my husband has tried to explain to me many times that maybe because Adam was alone for a while, <laughs> that we don't know how long he was alone, so he wasn't really thinking about other people. But that's just the truth. God, <laughs> praise God. God said, love your wife the way you will love yourself. Because even when they say love as Christ, the man will say Christ. I don't, I don't really know. Lo, yeah, love her, whenever you say love as Christ, love her the way you will love yourself. You don't beat yourself, do you? You don't lie to yourself, do you? You don't cheat on yourself, do you? So you know how to love yourself. God now said, don't even be too deep. Just love the way you can love yourself like this. I've never seen a man that is, is the way my head is paining me. I'm thinking, making stupid decisions. In fact, I'm a fool. He starts slapping himself. I've never seen it. But if your wife just do prayer like this, just descend on her. Because you are the alpha and the omega of your home. He said, love her the way you, you love yourself. And see, see, he says, with behavior that is worthy of respect and esteem. In other words, behave yourself so she can submit to you. Mm. Make it easy for her. Pastor, okay, talked to the women yesterday, and I hope we heard. Because whether you like it or not, these two things are what makes marriage work. If you say, I'm good, my, my husband will love me before I say, no, it doesn't work that way. Your own obedience must first be complete before you can avenge disobedience. Let me tell you one little story before I continue. When Pasquale and I first got married, first year, I can't even remember what Pasquale did, but I wasn't, very, I wasn't very happy about it. So I was sulking. I was just carrying my face around the house. I would do, do you want to eat? Okay, I'm coming, bring your food. <laughs> I was eating, nonsense, nonsense. <laughs> you know that, that's new wife behavior. Uh, I was doing nonsense. I said, do you want to eat? He said, are you okay? Yes. Is there anything wrong? No, nothing. <laughs> are you sure you're okay? Yes. I carried him. So I was carrying my face, thinking this man would be asking me what's wrong. You know, petting me. He will not. I'll bring food. He will eat. <laughs> Suck the bone. Crack. Ah, ah. That one did not pay me. Oh, my husband wake up in the morning. You will hear his worship, whether the song is off key or not. He will sing loud. Pray in tongues. I see. How can this man be praying in tongues? Even the Bible says that if somebody has something against you, you first at the quote scripture. Only me by myself inside my room. So after. Two days. Anna called me and said, do you know you are wicked? Ah! He said, wicked? From where to where? Like, <laughs> I said, yes. You know I've been upset with you. You didn't even... My husband said, upset with me? I said, yes. He said, oh, is that what that was? <laughs> that he thought I was being... Um, I was meditating and being spiritual. <laughs> so that he was challenged. That didn't I see the way he was praying more? And reading the Bible more that this woman will not come to my house and win me in the things of God. That was the day that I knew. Let me say it. I don't know. I'm trying to combine the English and the pigeon. That was the day that I knew that men didn't day. Do you understand? Men, they did not day. That was the day that I discovered that you are not married to another woman, you're married to a man. And men and women are so different. Listen, you cannot miss tomorrow morning. Pastor is going to take time to break down the differences between men and women. Listen, you are not married to another woman, so you cannot expect your husband to understand you. From that day, we made up our minds. We agreed. If something is wrong with you, you talk. <laughs> so we have a slogan in my house. You don't sulk, you talk. What did I say? You don't sulk, you... So all those words wrong with you, nothing. You know, help anybody. You will just suffer for nothing. You will bring food, he will eat. If you lie down near, with, near him, he will sleep with you. Every, nothing. The man don't know nothing is happening. <laughs> so he says, behavior that is worthy of respect and esteem. Always, not sometimes, always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness. 
So you are not seeking the best for her with an attitude of bullying. You are not seeking the best for her with an attitude of malice or so that you can brag about it. It is with loving kindness. In other words, you are doing it for her own good. And you are showing her that you are doing it for her own good. And you are doing it with kindness. You are doing it with love. So in other words, you are to lovingly lead her. And love her the way you love yourself. Even God did not ask that of us women. Men, that is what is required of you. Men, you are to love the way Christ. So if there's one car in the house, and both of you need to go out, guess what Jesus would do? So what they are saying is that you, are, you, have, to be, you have to reorientate yourself. So your, re, your response to your wife can never be selfishness. And that is so hard for men. Easy for women, which is why we don't understand. If I love you, why can't you give me a car? If I love you, why can't I leave everything for you? If I, as much as I'll be saying, now I'm not going to give you money. Oh. Ah, we should share our money equally. If, I, if we travel, what is what I'm saying that we don't share money equally? We don't share money equally. But if he sight me, I go give him. But he's, if, you are, if you ask man that, please come and give me some of your money. For what now? We share this money equal. Even if it's not, it can never. So God is saying you have to change the way you think. And that's why it still goes back to you have to be born again. Which means you have to have the nature of God to succeed at what God is asking you to do in marriage. Without having the nature of God, you cannot be successful in marriage. See, everywhere I go, I tell people, marriage is not a reward. Marriage is an assignment. So a lot of times people enter. Thank you. That my brother that is clapping for me. You will marry well. <laughs> Listen, if you treat marriage like, ah, thank God, God wants to bless me, wants to reward me, you will be so miserable in marriage. So miserable. Because you are depending on someone else for your joy, depending on someone else for your peace, depending on someone else for your supply. And that can, listen, the only person that can meet all your needs is our Lord Jesus Christ. And even he had to die first. So how can you expect a human being, a mere mortal like you, to be able to carry all your load? When you are getting to marriage, what you are saying to God, when you are taking your vows, ah, wedding day, they don't tell us the truth too, I'm telling you. You know this old, old, all these aunties, all these aunties that are always asking you, when will we come and eat rice now? When will we come and eat rice now? Do you answer them more? Ah. Uh, because nobody really tells you what you're getting into. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's why I bless God for your pastor. For organizing meetings like this. So you are entering with knowledge. Because you think that when you enter now, he's like, oh, I'm getting married. That's why when they give ring. I see all these girls on social media, they give you ring. You'll be jumping as if somebody, I said it the other day in my video. Somebody you've dated for 17 years. He gives you ring. You're saying, oh my God, I can't believe it. Oh my God. And then your friends are doing video. Hey. What, what, what can't you believe exactly? <laughs> I'm trying to understand and figure out what we're not believing. Is it that one day we'll marry you? Or that finally after 17 years? Or which part of it don't you believe? Or that you're about to sign up for work? Because marriage is work. Marriage is work, even though we shouldn't make it like work. It should still be fun, but marriage is work. Don't let anybody lie to you. Yes, there's the love it of it part, but there's also the part that they will pay bills. We go cook every day. Uh, that, that's one of the major shockers for most women when they get married. That you have to cook every day. And in case you don't know, let me tell you. When you get married to a man, suddenly, I don't know becomes their favorite food. <laughs> Only what are you going to eat? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me behave myself. <laughs> I'm actually behaving extra because Pastor K is in the room. <laughs> okay. Hmm. It says, the man is to treat with an attitude of loving kindness. So, marriage, really, is not, like I said, it's not a reward. It's God sending you on assignment. You're partnering with God to make sure that the person that you're joining with will fulfill his destiny and be everything that God has called him to be. Or you are, that you're partnering with God, that this woman will be everything that God has called her to be. When, when we now got married, first three years, I was a mess. Children, I was looking for my mom saying, no, I've, I've had my children. See, my brother, the way they do, you know, they do me. They told me I will not have children. 
This is the third year I'm not seeing children. And you're telling me, I started going from doctor to doctor. Ah, there's nowhere I didn't go. Hey. There's this doctor in Wari. I don't go. There's this specialist in Abuja. I'm there. Oh, there's this doctor in Ikeja. I'm there. Oh, there's this doctor in Potaka. I even came to Potaka. I went everywhere. There's this doctor in Ife. I went everywhere looking for a child. God now started dealing with me. Still goes back to the word. See, if you can go, if you can, if you can go, to, see the word. The word is everything. Everything. So remember, the reason why I told you how I got married is because I wanted to show you how God speaks to me through the word. Very literal. So when it was time to now have children now, so my, my mom was in panic mode. Ah, oh, there's this doctor here. Come and go here. Everything. She was running around now. At some point, I'm giving you the very abridged version. At some point, God now gave me this scripture. Isaiah 8, 19 to 22, message translation. It says, when people tell you, try out the fortune tellers, consult the spiritualist. Why not tap into the spirit world? Get in touch with the dead. He said, tell them, no, we're going to study the scriptures. People who try the other ways get nowhere, a dead end. So I knew that God wanted me to stay on the word. There's nothing wrong with going the medical route, but God did not want me to do that. Because I've been running from doctor to doctor. In fact, I went to one hospital one day. They told me to go to one specialist something. When I entered there, I was the last person on the queue. They did the ultrasound for everybody. They just put it in on my tummy like this. Everything in the hospital went, bish, lights went off everything. They went, I apologize, it's not possible. Those machines just came from the UK last Tuesday. Those people say, Jonah, stand up for me and be going. I just carried my bag. As I was going, they said, Ma, come and take your refund. I said, at least, Jonah no carry anything. Me, I still collect my refund. I carried my refund. I was going. As I got outside, God dropped the scripture in my heart. Isaiah 30, verse 15 to 17. So I opened my Bible when I got into the car. He said, God the Master, the Holy of Israel, has this solemn counsel. So the Holy Spirit is advising me now. Your salvation requires you to turn back to me and stop your silly efforts to save yourself. Your strength will come from settling down in complete dependence on me, the very thing you've been unwilling to do. So I knew that, uh-uh, uh-uh, what's it happen? In fact, the final straw was, there was one particular doctor, my friend came to me and said, this guy, he's a word man, a man of faith, blah, 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 let's go to his hospital, he won't give you confessions to do everything, don't worry, he's a Christian I know when they want to justify things. That's why some of the things that you're hearing on social media, you need to be careful. They will cover it with the word. Satan never comes like that. He told Jesus. He quoted the scripture, even though he was misquoting it, but he quoted the scripture. So he can come as an angel of light, but we know who he truly is. So they came and told me, after God had told me, God has said something. Somebody else is saying something. God says submit. The word is saying don't submit. God says love your wife, and the word is saying it's okay now. Nobody, men, men can't control themselves. Men can't control themselves. You, you see, do you understand how a man's sexual libido is? You people don't get it. Men, lies. All lies. What did God say? What did God say? Let me read you one scripture. Bless me. Absolutely bless me. First Corinthians 7 verse 3. The message translation. You know when people always say things like, oh, you know, men can't handle themselves. Men is sexual, something, something. See it here. It says sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain, contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. So marriage is, is strong enough to contain anything you want to. If you want your wife to somersault on the, the what's that thing Pastor used to say? Uh -huh, to spin on the fan. Teach them now. Teach her, you have liberty. If you want to hang her by her toe, it's okay. It's your wife. Do as occasion serves you. I'm supposed to be behaving myself today. That's what they said. They said I should behave myself when I was coming. <laughs> and so, God, <laughs> and so this friend told me that, oh, there's this doctor that I should go. So I went to see the doctor. The man told me, okay, we'll do some tests. Uh, you're supposed to be ovulating on the 14th day. Come on the 12th day, we'll do some tests, blah, blah, blah. So on the 12th day, before I came, I went on the 14th day, I went to my friend's house again. I met one woman there. And so the woman was talking about David and Davida, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, those are my children's names. Oh. She now said, oh, really? I said, yes. She said, oh, those are her children's names. So I said, oh, I'm coming to sow into your life. I'm trusting God for David and Davida. The woman said, okay, we laughed. As I was going, my friend asked me, you don't know that woman? She was walking me to my car. I said, I don't know her more. He said, you don't know that woman? I said, I don't know her now. Who she be? 
He said, that's, that's your doctor's wife now. I said, are you serious? Hey, my doctor has twins, David and Davida. She said, which twins? The woman, if I begin a fate, they talk. <laughs> I entered my car, and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, why won't you let me help you? Why are you running to a man that is looking for the exact same thing you're looking for? I cried. After crying, I cleaned my eyes. Went to the office and told my husband, Mr. Romantic, guess what he did? He fell down on the floor laughing. <laughs> he said, I think you know the year word. <laughs> I like the way God deals with you. He fell on the floor and laughed at me. And that day I made up my mind that I was going to go back to the word. I saw the scripture. I just read the scripture. I'm almost done. John 6, 63, the message translation. He says, the spirit can make life. Ah, something came alive in me. The spirit can make life. He said, sheer muscle and willpower don't make anything happen. Every word I've spoken to you is a spirit word. So it is life making. So I knew. I got pregnant. I knew. Every word. So I started going to the scriptures. I carried my husband's old Dick's Bible. His concordance. His Nelson. Something, all those he studied something. Shall put everything down. Sat down, bought journals, I started writing every scripture. It's not now, Google is your friend now. Every scripture I could find on infertility, childbearing, everything, I wrote them down. I confessed morning, afternoon, night. The way I would take medicine, the way I took it. I consistently did this for the next five years. And in eight years, I had, my, my, I had two children by eight years. By, by, by the time 10 years in marriage, I had three children. And now, because I had been confessing, it's a long story, I don't even want to go into it. I had been confessing that there are two nations in my womb. Two people will be separated from my body. One will be physically stronger than the other. I knew one would be a boy and the other would be a girl. I knew that the boy would be the last one. I knew, you know how you have built, it's life, see it now, it's life making. The word, I'd used the word to create what I wanted to see. So I confess this thing so much. And people, every time people would ask me, I'd say, I'm having twins, I'm having twins. When I had my children, Davida was born August 22nd, 2013. David was born August 22nd, 2015. Two years apart, but they're still twins. As far as I'm concerned, because now one party we they do. <laughs> one birthday. <laughs> Same friends. And that's really the evil girl in me. I didn't want to waste money. <laughs> and to be honest, there is nothing you cannot build without, with the word. The marriage you want is with the word. The marriage that you want, you can write down every scripture that you want and start to confess it and believe it, meditate on it. When you meditate on it, see this scripture, James 1.25. It says, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. Ha! He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. There's work. So as you're looking into the word, it's telling you, be patient, be kind. So every time when I read 1 Corinthians 13, I don't read it like, I love it, I love it. I say Mildred is patient with Kingsley. And I confess it because I'm not naturally a patient person. Mildred keeps no records of wrong done to her by Kingsley. I am a record keeper. So every day when I say, I literally say it every day. I say what I want to see in him, the kind of man that he will become. Listen, I did it so much. I even, there's a book here. Prayer, John, praying for your husband. Scriptures I started praying for my dad. Volume 2 is coming out, child. But this one, the scriptures I prayed, I prayed so much. I even prayed that my husband would learn to deal with me with understanding so that his prayers will not be hindered. At first, when I started praying that prayer, Satan would come and say, what kind of selfish prayer is that? I say, no. I said, well, it will come to me that if he doesn't love me right, his prayers will be hindered. So he favor both of us. He will love me, you get his answer. Everybody's good. You can literally use this principle in any way. Praying for your spouse. A lot of women always say, they say, why do women, why are women always praying? Let me, let me, let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. Because that's what I want to say, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave the space. I want to help one woman here. You've been hearing all these funny feminists. Yes, they come for me, so I'm coming for them. All these funny feminists, I know they fear, I know they, my face is a flint. I fear nobody. The day you die for me, then we'll have a conversation. But what God said is what I'm going to say. I don't care what they say. Feminism in marriage is rubbish. Yeah, I said it. I'm going to say it again. Feminism in marriage is not God's word. You can be doing your feminism in the office. 
Because yes, if you're a woman and you work like a man, you should be paid like a man. But in marriage, there's only one head. And you had the first right of choice. So if you choose the man, then you submit to him. So what you really should do is you should choose well. Not choose rubbish and not be fighting and drinking medicine after death. So when God's word says something, do it. God's word says submit, submit. God's word says respect, respect. God's word says love, love. Love, don't be carried away by what's happening out there. The word of God will change anything. It will change anything. Your marriage, it will alter anything if you put it to work. He says a doer of the work. A lot of times people say a doer of the word. It's a doer of the work. This work. Studying the scriptures, finding the right, every is work. So women complaining about why are we they always the ones praying? Once I start praying with your praying for your husband, they will not enter my DM. And they don't have chest. If you want to say rubbish, may I say my see, I say my own publicly. Why are you coming to my DM? I dare you. I dare you come and tell me. That God said we should pray for our husband. I'm not praying for your husband, I'm praying for my own. Why are you angry? Don't pray for your own now. Nah. See, why are you, it's always women. Why is always women praying? It's the only women in the marriage. It's the only, you that you are not praying. How is your marriage? How is your marriage? And then because of that, we that should be grounded in the word and know what God's word says, we are moved by everything that is moving out there. And you say, it's true, Seth. Why, is, why don't they have prayer meeting for men to pray for their wives? Let me explain something to you. You and somebody are living in a room. And the room is dirty. The person refuses to clean up. You would rather be sick than clean up. Really? Is that what you would do? You would rather be sick than clean up? How does that make any sense? So you will start praying for him till he knows that ah, this prayer they work will make me safe. They pray for her. But see, let me tell you. Eh, God said men should love their wives the way they even love themselves. Some of them don't even pray for themselves. <laughs> Make them first pray for themselves then they will not be able to pray for you. But if you are fighting that lost battle, it's a waste of time. So you, if you know that God has called you to pray for your spouse, whether you are male or female, pray, oh. Because I hear some men too, it's true. Um, it's, it's a woman's job to pray. Where? Where is it in the Bible, please? Where? Who said? Because we're living our lives based on what social media is saying. Be careful who you allow speak into your marriage and your home and your family. The word of God should be your first, your last, and the final authority in your life. Praise God. So this principle of the word, if you can take the word, look for what God says about any situation in your life. Marriage, children, parenting, the results are the same. Once you just have the formula, the results are the same. If you use it for children, you will have children. I have three today. Three. They are jumping all over. And exactly what I wanted. Even down to their temperament. Even down to how I wanted. I wanted David to be like his dad boy. A little more emotionally in touch. <laughs> just saying. And David is one of the sweetest. He would just come. Mommy, I just came to tell you you are so beautiful. Come and see. He will not hold my hand and take me to the mirror. I say, I don't really need you anymore, sir. <laughs> tell me again, my darling son. <laughs> Everything. The first one I said, that's how you'll be a leader. He's a leader. Leader, that, I said, you'll be, see, you go no booking. You'll be calling me Harvard because of you. You better get no booking. Uh -uh. So it works. Tell your neighbor it works. it works. It works. So work the word if you want the word to work for you. What did I say? Work the word. Word to work for you. God bless you. Hey people, so if I have never invited you to be a part of Praying Pastor M, let me apologize officially. And let me take this opportunity to invite you to be a part of a very growing family on Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, please follow me at Pastor Mildred and join me 3 p.m. every day, West African time, to be a part of what we do. Um, it's just a time where we get to learn about the Word of God, have fun, talk about real life issues, and just connect with each other. So please be a part of it every day of the week, Monday to Saturday, 
3 p.m. with PM. Praying with Pastor M. God bless you.